Hi, welcome to this demo of contract driven development where I'm going to use Specmatic, an open source tool to turn your API specification into executable contract. We have an app which sends a request to a BFF, a backend for frontend, which in turn sends a request to a domain service. Notice you could have one or many domain services. Once the domain service gets back with a response, we want the BFF to log the message onto a Kafka topic, which allows our analytics server to pick it up and do its thing. The BFF would get back to the application with its response. In order to allow the app and the BFF to independently develop and deploy, we would like to capture the contract between them in an open API specification. This would capture things like what is the URLs that are being exposed by the BFF, the request parameters, the mandatory optional parameters, and also what is the response that the BFF would give to this request which means what are all the HTTP statuses that it can get back with, also the schema of the response. Similarly, between the BFF and domain service, we would have the open API specification. Now for Kafka, we would capture the specification in something called async API, where you can describe what are all the topics that are available and the message formats of those topics. Now let's jump into a demo. All right, to start this demo, let's first start our domain service, which is the order API. I'm going to, it's a Spring Boot app, so I'm just going to get the app started. And then here we have the domain service. We need to start Kafka. So let me go here quickly, and you will see here that I'm using Specmatic to stub out Kafka. We'll get into this detail a little bit later. Let's get this kicked off and you'll see that Specmatic is starting this. It figured out uh, where it is, uh, where which ports are available. And as you can see, now it's listening to, uh, you know, messages on this topic, product queries. Let's also start our BFF layer. Uh, again, a Spring Boot application, which we're gonna kickstart with a uh, Gradle command. And there we have the Spring Boot application also started. Let's make sure all of these things are wired up and working correctly. I'm going to try and make a curl request. I expect when I make this request, one message to come back. And sure enough, yes, we got one message. So this means that all our uh, services are now wired up correctly. So with that, we are ready to get started. So I have this open API specification, which describes my BFF layer. Uh, it's got a bunch of paths here. So there is slash products, which is I can make a post request to create a new product. It can respond with the 201, 400, 503. I also have a find available products, which basically takes a query parameter and also a header parameter called page size to get me back a list of products. I can also create orders and so forth. I'm going to use Specmatic plugin, which is built into VS Code to run the contract test. And there we go. So here you will notice that I'm pointing to the BFF API specification, which we just looked at a minute ago. And I'm also pointing to where my application is running. It's running on port 8080. Uh, so with that, let's kind of uh, run these tests. Notice that I've not written a single line of code at this point. And when I run this test, it's going to uh, go ahead and generate its executing seven contract tests for me. Where did it find these contract tests? It basically figured out from the open API specification. Let's uh, zoom this in. So as you can see, it's made a request to slash products and it figured out that I can send 177 for inventory because it's a type integer. There is type gadget and then name it's generated again a random value and the server responded back with a 201 and gave an id 4 and this we are then saying that this was a successful test similarly it's made another request and this time you will notice that uh, instead of here we used gadget it's used type book so how is specmatic figuring out that it needs to send these things Let's quickly go to the open API specification and look at this section. So you will see here for type, we have defined it as an enum, which is gadget, book, food, order. And so what Specmatic does is it takes that and it trades through that. And you will see that it's made a request for each one of these types. 
and of course it's made request now to slash find available products uh, and it's got a list of products back it's validated against the specifications response and it's said yes this makes sense this is all matching and hence this test is succeeded it's also tried to make a request to find products with type string and it's got back a 400 error we'll get to it in a minute why this happened and finally it's try to make a request to orders with certain product id and essentially it's got back a 404 which means this does not exist one other cool feature of specmatic is it also shows you an api coverage so very quickly you can see what all paths exist within the application both in your api specification and in your application and it then kind of reports whether it was able to cover it or not uh, so in this case it found slash find available products there is a get request only on it and it has 200 400 and 503 it was able to make two get requests and those two were covered but was not able to make any request to 400 or 503 uh, similarly, it also found a slash help point, which it say it's missing in the specification, which means uh, it found it in the application, but not in the specification. Wait a second, how is Specmatic figuring out that slash health exists in the application, but not in the specification? So here we use uh, Actuator, which in Spring Boot comes built in. And using the Actuator, you can figure out what all paths are available. This can be very handy if you want to do any observability. So Specmatic Leverage is the same thing and tries to figure out, okay, I found a slash health endpoint uh, on the application, but I do not see that in the specification. Similarly, it also found a slash orders in the application and it found that missing. Uh, however, you can notice that there is a what was supposed to be orders, it looks like a typo, uh, which is there in the specification but not in the application and hence it's saying it's not implemented, uh, similarly slash products. So this is cool because now very quickly you can get a quick overview of what is there in your specification and also what is there in your application and with specmatics plugin we were able to figure out and even execute some tests now let's try and clean up this and try and get a better coverage all right so the first thing i want to do is i want to fix this typo in the specification so that we can make it work uh, so let's go to right here uh, we see that there is a typo so i'm going to try and fix that typo and uh, with that let's uh, run the contract test again right here specmatic is going and running these contract tests again and notice this time it is basically says slash orders yes it is available in both places and it did in fact cover it this health endpoint is interesting i actually don't want this health endpoint to be in my specification it's purely for uh, monitoring and observability so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use one of the features we have here where we can exclude certain health endpoints or other kinds of health points and let's with that run this again so specmatic is going to go ahead and execute all of these tests and this time you will notice that slash health is not being reported and we've been able to now achieve a 33% coverage on all of our paths that we have. 33 is great. We have the positive cases, the 200 cases covered. None of the 400 or 503 cases are covered at this point. And also we have two failing tests uh, as you can see. So out of the total seven tests that it generated, five are successful and two are failing. Why are the two failing? Because Specmatic has kind of tried to guess certain data and generate that, but that data does not exist. Uh, for example, here, uh, we try to create an order with a product ID 674, uh, but this 674 is not actually a valid ID in our database. Uh, it's, there isn't a product uh, with 674 in the database. So at this point, uh, what we would need to do is provide examples uh, in our specification so that Specmatic can guide its generation of tests. We're going to use our plugin to generate examples. So I'm going to go ahead and kick that off. And you will see here we are leveraging GPT-4 to generate these examples. All right, there we go. As you can see, 
Specmatic has been able to leverage GPT-4 to generate relevant examples for our context. So uh, here we can see the difference, what was before and after. So in the products, it's uh, generated an example of a successful request it can make with iPhone, gadget and 100 as the inventory, which kind of makes sense. Similarly, it's, you know, said, OK, uh, I should get back ID one, which is a valid ID in our case. There's several different examples and you can also notice that it's uh, generated another example for the get where we are saying that, you know, when you get, I should get back a product with uh, iPhone ID one uh, type gadget and even a little description saying latest iPhone model using GPT allows us to generate really relevant examples. I could have manually written all of this, but you could actually generate lot of these examples leveraging GPT so why would you kind of want to do this by hand all right with that I think we can close this uh, uh, comparison window and now let's go back and run our uh, contract test uh, actually I'm going to just reuse this window let's clean this and run this here we go again and you will notice that this time Specmatic has generated only three tests which it used to generate seven tests, but now it's down to three tests. And the reason is now Specmatic is going to use only the examples that you have provided and use those to generate the tests. And this case, now you can see that we've got all our tests passing. We don't have any more failures. Of course, we have one, one, one of each of these covered. So we're still maintaining the 33% coverage. The question is, can we do something better? And yes, in fact, let's go ahead. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this feature called generative tests. All right. So what is generative tests? Let me quickly run this. And then as the tests run, I'm going to uh, explain to you what generative test does. I'm going to clear this out so that you can see what's going to happen. Let's go ahead and run this. And wow, you can see now Specmatic is generating 41 tests, all right? And you can see as things are scrolling by, there are some positive, some negative scenarios it's gonna generate. It's gonna generate a whole bunch of different tests and they are kind of going ahead. And wow, you can see that we have 41 tests that it generated, only six succeeded, 35 failed, all right? So how did Specmatic generate 41 tests? So we, kind of took the inspiration from two things here. One is property-based testing and mutation testing. Let me explain each of these. So what is property-based testing? In our case, we understand that we can look at the open API specification. If a certain field is or a parameter is marked as mandatory, then we know that's a property of this API that for this particular request, this particular field or parameter is mandatory and we want to we have to send that and so it's, you, if you don't send it then you would expect a 404 or some kind of a bad request 400 bad requests to come back right and so we can kind of think about these properties of the open API specification or async API specification and leverage that to kind of help us construct a set of tests for us then also to build on that idea, we can look at mutation testing where essentially you can mutate the code and then send requests to the code and see if the test that we're passing earlier starts to fail now. So instead of doing that exact same thing, we kind of took inspiration from it and changed the idea a little bit where instead of mutating the code, we mutate the request. So for example, if something is mandatory uh, and when we send it, we get a 201 back. But in this case, if we don't send something, uh, then we expect a 400 to come back, which is kind of some examples you will see here that we have generated. So that's the combination of uh, property-based testing and mutation testing, uh, which we call as generative tests. And that's what has allowed us to generate these 41 tests for you. However, these 35 tests are failing. Let's understand why they are failing. They're saying key named message is uh, in the response, but not in the specification. 
okay response body message why is that happening let's look at one of these requests that it's sent so it sent this request to orders uh, with some value and essentially uh, count should have been a number but in this case we have mutated the value and we have sent instead of a number we have sent a string to just make sure that you know your code can handle this and does not end up in an exception uh, and what we see is this negative scenario has failed because the key named message which is this guy uh, is not there in the specification so what is there in the specification let's go to the specification here and this is the bad request okay so as you can see we have timestamp yeah sure enough we have status okay sure we have error cool but here we in the specification we have path however the actual response is a message yeah that makes sense this looks like again a mistake in the specification this should have been a message so let's kind of update the specification with that and let's clear this out and let me run the contract test again and see what happens this time all right it's generating the 41 tests again cool and like you can see now we have finished and we have been able to successfully generate all the tests and all the tests are passing wow this is pretty cool let me look at the api specification and you can see that now we have 67 percentage on all three paths and you'd also notice some of the 400 cases are being covered which is pretty cool uh, so we now are covering 200 and we are covering 400 and as you can see here let's look at some of these just to understand what it's done so there are in the beginning there are a whole bunch of positive scenarios as you can see this plus positive scenarios and then these are the standard ones that we've seen before let's scroll down to a negative scenario so here we have a negative scenario where name which is a mandatory and a non-nullable field we have sent uh, specmatic has sent a null and it's of course got a 400 bad request uh, which is expected in this case and hence we are saying yes this scenario has succeeded for us this negative scenario has succeeded our application knows how to handle this correctly and give back a 400 response and of course we will iterate through all the different uh, enum types and have a test for each one of those we'll also see a few other interesting examples where name is sent as 470 name is a string but we're sending a number to see what happens and sure the application is throwing a 400 back and that also has helped us succeed this test uh, so like this pragmatic figures out and sends different combinations again you can see here name is sent as a boolean value and similarly you'll also see some where inventory we play around with inventory and see if that is being handled here you can see type was sent as null uh, and so forth so these are all valid examples of negative tests to make sure that the application can handle all of that and that's how we arrived at these combinations of 41 tests and we were able to validate both positive and negative scenario so let me just quickly recap right so we started we had an open api specification we got the application running and then we used specmatics plugin to generate tests for us we did not write a single line of code uh, just with the specification it was able to generate seven tests for us of course five tests were passing and two were failing because the examples were kind of missing but when we did that we also got an api coverage and we figured out there were some mismatches between the specification and the application we were able to fix those and we were also able to ignore the slash health endpoint which we didn't want to cover in the specification and we now had tests working however the examples were missing so again we use specmatic and uh, leveraging gpt4 we were able to generate examples for us and with that we were able to bring down the test count to three specific examples that we were given and all those three tests were passing then we turned on generative tests and with generative tests we were able to generate 41 tests and initially quite a few of those tests failed because again there was a mismatch in the specification but once we fixed the specification we were able to see all the 41 tests pass 
and now we have pretty good coverage of 67%. However, I'm still worried about this 503. We do not seem to cover this. And so for that, let's look at another interesting aspect of uh, Specmatic. If we go back to our slide over here, you would see that we have a domain service running, basically catering to the request that the BFF is sending. In this case, we have a real domain service running and the BFS is connecting to the real domain service. Now I want to simulate a case where for those 41 tests that I have, I want to make sure that the domain service is responding back with the valid responses like it's doing now. However, I want to add another new scenario. Uh, in that scenario, I want to make sure that domain service does not respond back in time, right? Let's assume that my BFF has a timeout set for three seconds for, to receive a response back. But BFF, when it contacts the domain service, the domain service takes more than three seconds, let's say five seconds to respond back. In that case, I would expect my BFF to give me a 503 back. The service is unavailable and I really can't do anything. So I want to now test this scenario. How do you think we can do this in, 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 in the case that I want the 41 test that I already have to respond within the three seconds timeout, but for only the 40 second scenario, I want the domain service to not respond back in time. Well, you could be sitting there watching these tests run and when the last scenario is about to run, you could shut down the domain service and make sure that it times out and you can simulate this. But, you know, how would you do this in your CI pipelines? And also, you know, it's not practical to be able to do this. So for that, we do have a feature in Specmatic where we will be able to simulate these. But for that first, I want to not rely on an actual domain service. Instead, I want to stub out the domain service and then do all kinds of fault injection, different scenarios. I'd, I'd have full control over that. So let's see how we can stub out the actual service, the domain service that is running with with a Specmatic stub. The good news is that if you already have an open API specification for this, you could leverage that. But it may also happen that you don't have an open API specification already for the domain service. Don't worry, Specmatic has a feature called proxy through which we will be able to record the interactions between the BFF and domain service and generate an open API specification along with the request response, the stub data, what we call, so that you can replace all the requests exactly the same way back. Uh, this is what we call a service virtualization. So let's look at how that can be done. So let me quickly jump here. Let's clear this out. Let's look at, you know, I'm going to start a proxy server. So what I'm saying is, hey, Specmatic, this is my target uh, localhost 8090, which is where the domain service is running and record all of the interactions in a recordings folder for me. So I'm going to kickstart that. And with this Specmatic says, okay, I have now a proxy server running on 9000. And that is basically channeling all requests going to 8090. Perfect. Also here in the application properties, you will notice that the order API, which is our domain service is running on 8090. Now we want to say, hey, not 8090, go to 9000 where our proxy server is running uh, so that we can channel all the requests. I make that change and let me just quickly uh, restart my BFF layer so it will pick up this change. And yep, there we go. It is uh, started. So now let's go back to our contract test and rerun the contract test. So I'm just going to run the contract test again uh, and you'll see it's going ahead and rerunning again those 41 different scenarios. And what you will see here, if I go to the proxy, it is now recording all the traffic that is going through, the requests that are going through and the response that is coming back. Looks like it has stopped, which means 
yeah our 41 tests have run and all of them are successful notice that the application is none the wiser now it is just you know behave the way it was behaving earlier uh, except that we have routed all the traffic through this proxy server so let me shut down this proxy server and when i shut down the proxy server you will notice that it has generated the open api specification for the domain service and it's also generated out 13 stubs you'll notice that we had 41 tests running but only 13 stubs have been generated this is why we call this as intelligent service virtualization which means it is not just a dumb recording of every request it's actually looking at those requests and saying yep these two requests are kind of similar i can generalize it and then it distills it down to these 13 unique requests let's go to the recordings folder and let's see uh, this open api specification that is generated so it's generated an open api specification for slash products and it says okay there is a get on this which takes parameters uh, in the query called type it has a bunch of other parameters that it's expect expecting and then it sends back a response and it's also nicely reused the response uh, by uh, you know capturing it over here so you can jump over here and see that id inventory name and type is what the response comes back so like this specmatic has now recorded several different apis endpoints for the domain service and also generated the stub data so we can look at any one of the stub data and see what it's happened what's in it so it says okay http requests slash products uh, post request and it's got this uh, in the header it's got this in the body and then the response came back with the status 200 and a id 37 back all right so that is just a simple request response pair that it's captured as a stub files and each of them will have some unique flavor of the request response so perfect with that now i have the open api specification for the domain service i also have some stub data for it and with that i should be able to tell specmatic to run now specmatic in a stub mode and point it to the generated open api specification saying use this generated open api specification as a way to generate a stub out of it again you're not writing any line of code here to generate a stub and you're actually referring to an open api specification to generate the stub this is a big deal because most often people have to write a lot of code to generate these stubs or use some tools to generate these and they kind of very quickly drift away and go out of sync but in this case because we are we will be referring to the same open api specification that the provider is also using to generate contract tests they don't drift away they they point to the same single source of truth which ideally exists in a central git repo so anyway with that let me quickly run this and you will notice that it will go ahead and load all the stubs up and say okay i have now got a stub server running for you at port 9000 and you can go ahead and use it just to be sure that we are not fooling ourselves i'm going to go ahead and here in my api the domain service uh, order api i'm just going to i've killed it so now there is no longer the service running and we only have a proxy running at this stage uh, what do you reckon when i run these tests what do you expect to see well i expect to see that everything works as before and there is no surprises okay let's run the test and see what happens now i expect that the application would be none the wiser it'll still go ahead and generate those 41 tests and you will also be able to see at the proxy there are requests that are coming in and the rest the proxy is responding to all of those requests and there we go so we have all 41 tests that have succeeded we don't have a downstream service running the domain service we are able to completely work off a stub that is generated purely from the open api specification by specmatic again without writing a single line of code this is why we say this is a no code solution now of course you know we still have not done anything to cover the 503 case because so far all we have tried to do is essentially stub out the downstream service so that we have much better control now and we can simulate the different conditions so with that 
let me jump in and show you how we will be able to generate a 503 response in this case. So we want to basically go to the generated spec. But before that, actually, let me add another example here, uh, which basically says anytime I make a get request for, let's say, the type other, I want it to generate a response with a basically timeout and that would result in a 503. So let me find the relevant section. So find products. Okay. We have an example over here, which is a success example. I'm going to add another example for uh, timeout. I'm just, that's just a name that I'm giving. And uh, that should be okay. value 100 really does not matter. Similarly, for query, I'm going to add for the query parameter, I'm going to add another example, which I'm going to use as other. So anytime I send other in the query parameter for slash valid, uh, available products, I expect let's go to the response here real quick. This is my 503 bad request. So I'm going to go here. And I'm going to give an example. So examples. And you can see GitHub Copilot is kind of already guessed that this is the response that you would want. Timeout, a 503 service unavailable because of a timeout. And so with that example in, now I have added another example in my uh, OpenAPI specification, which is essentially expecting anytime I send a query parameter as other to get a 403. To make this possible, we will have to go to the generated test data. Let's look at one of the examples like here we have slash products, a get and then we are responding back with some valid response. I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this. I'm going to make a copy. Just going to rename this to stub timeout. And in this case, instead of gadget, now I want to put other. All right. And here, and I'm going to go ahead and add a, a new property, which essentially says delay the uh, response to five seconds. So whenever you get a request for slash products get for a type other, then delay the response back in five seconds. You will notice that as soon as we have updated the stub specmatic proxy automatically reloads it. So we have this loaded now. So with that, let me quickly go back to our contract tests. Now let's run the contract tests again and see what happens. So this time I would expect to run 42 tests. The one new scenario that we've added for the timeout. And uh, with that, it's going ahead and running all the tests. And sure enough, as you can see, we have 42 tests that ran. All 42 tests succeeded. And let's look at this. And you would see here that we've got 100% API coverage for the slash find available products. And you'll also notice that a 503 case is now covered. How did this happen? This happened because we were able to simulate a you know timeout and that resulted in a service unavailable response. So let's quickly look at where did we generate the 503. So you will notice here I made a request to find available products with type other. And whenever we send with type other, we expect a uh, the downstream service to basically result in a timeout and which again this uh, BFF layer will propagate as a 503 service not available. And we're also validating that the 503 is matching the schema that we have for 503. So with that, we have been able to uh, use Specmatic to generate the contract test. We're also able to stub out downstream services and do fault injection and other kinds of negative scenarios because we have control over the downstream service through a stub that we generated. And now we are able to get a fairly high degree of confidence that our uh, specification is in fact in line with the actual implementation. 
So that is in a short demo what the power of Specmatic is. Also, I talked about uh, later on, I'll show you how we were stubbing out Kafka. So here, if I go to this, uh, you will notice that all these requests are coming in. The messages are being posted onto the Kafka topic. And essentially, this is a Specmatic stub that is running because we don't really want to have a Kafka real instance of a Kafka broker running on this laptop. While you can certainly do it, there will be inherent latencies and other kinds of things that you have to deal with. And this kind of certainty that you have for your contract tests, you would not be able to get. So in in this case, at the end of this demo, what we've been able to achieve is stub out both the dependencies that the BFF layer has. So the domain service, we were able to stub out and we were also able to stub out the Kafka dependency that this service has. And now we have full control over our BFF layer and we can contract test it, make sure that it is in line with the specification. I've been showing you the demo of running these contract tests from the plugin. However, I just want to make sure you can also understand that you can run all these tests from a code. All these changes that we have made can be checked in and can be run by other developers on their local machine as well as by your CI pipeline. Also to run that, Specmatic can generate this one-time contract test code uh, where we essentially just need to configure where our application is running, where our step server is running, where the Kafka mock is running, and you can then specify whether you want generative tests on or off, uh, and pretty much specify the location of where the stubs are available and start the application. Let me quickly run this test now for you. And as you can see, it is kicking off and running these tests. And there we have the 42 tests, the same test that we saw running earlier. All those 42 tests are now running from within my IDE. Same thing can run from uh, the CI pipeline as well. And this way you can ensure that these tests are uh, continuously run by other developers and also by your CI pipeline. Cool, that was a quick live demo. Uh, let's just quickly recap. So we have uh, the BFF uh, here, which is a system under test. We were able to use Specmatic contract test to use the open API specification to generate the test. We were also able to stub out the domain service dependency through a Specmatic HTTP stub, which was based off the open API specification, of course. We were also able to stub out the entire Kafka piece with a Kafka mock that was generated using the async API. And what that essentially did was generated uh, or created an in-memory broker for us and created the topic that was there in the async API specification. We were also able to do schema validations of whether the messages that were posted on the topic were actually schema valid as per the async API. So initially we set expectations through those json stub files that you saw on the http stub we were also able to set expectations on the kafka topics and then we uh, generated the request from specmatic to the bff layer which went through the stub the stub responded back uh, the bff layer then put the message on the kafka topic and uh, sent the response back whenever the response came specmatic was able to validate that the response was in line with the response schema and data types that were specified in the open api specification it was also able to then verify whether the number of messages that were posted on the topic and the schema of those messages that were posted were in fact as per the async api specification so that is in a nutshell how we are able to contract test the bff layer and make sure that it is in line with the specification and interacts with its downstream dependencies as expected and as specified in their respective specification if you were to do this without specmatic typically you would have to do continuous integration like the consumer would do continuous integration with some kind of a stub that they would have hand created on their own and things would all look good in their local environment and continuous integration environment. Similarly, the provider would do the API testing locally and on the CI. However, when they came to the integration environment, they would realize that maybe there are some disconnects and that would cause 
problems in integration and the entire environment can become stable and this also blocks your path to production and uh, you know the later you find these issues the more expensive they get so the whole idea with contract driven development is to shift this left and give that feedback as early as possible ideally on the developer's laptop we do this through specmatic where we take an open api specification or async api specification and we generate a stub for you which is service virtualization and uh, the consumer can now work with the stub uh, as if it was talking to the real thing and we take the same very specification because that's a single source of truth and generate tests of that to make sure that the provider is in fact adhering to the specification this is what ensures that they don't drift away and they both can independently develop their stuff while being completely in sync all right so having a single source of truth is extremely important because even though many teams agree to an open api specification but they may miss updating it or they may not refer to the current version and you may still end up implementing things in a wrong way and have a integration issue at a later point in time so what we try to do is we put all of this in a central git repo so we take the open api specification we create a central git repo and we go through a pull request process where we do linting to make sure that the open api or async api specifications are as per the standards that we have agreed we also then do a compatibility test to make sure that when you're making any changes to these specifications you're not accidentally breaking backward compatibility so how does this backward compatibility thing work so what specmatic does is it basically takes the new version of the specification and it picks the old version of the specification from the git repo and notice earlier i explained that specmatic can take the very same specification and run that as a stub in service virtualization mode and also run it as tests in a contract testing mode so what we do is and this was almost an accidental discovery i would say uh, where we take the new specification and we run that as a stub and we take the old specification we run that as a test so the old specification will make api requests to the new specification that's running as a stub as long as all the old tests pass then you know that your new version of the api specification is backward compatible uh, so that's what happens a real test get executed it's not a simple uh, text comparison these are real tests that get executed and then once you uh, the tests are passed someone would review and merge this and this will ensure that your single source of truth which is the central contract always stays up to date all right to just summarize specmatic then takes the open api specification the consumers can run their tests locally by using contract as stub or service virtualization the providers can take the contract tests and use specmatic to generate the contract test to validate whether their implementation is in sync with the specification the same thing can be leveraged in the ci where they are all referring to the single source of truth which is the open api or async api specification uh, on both sides and when they come to an integration environment you do not expect to see any surprises and you can get to production as quickly as possible that's in a nutshell what we call as contract driven development we have recently launched specmatic insights which allows teams to visualize the service dependencies in a very visual manner where you can take all the data that is generated by running these contract tests in your pipeline and have this visualization built out of real data and then see which service is dependent on which other service what endpoints is it dependent on and do you have like a single point of failure do you have a choking point in your architecture you also be able to drill down into a specific api and look at what are all its consumers what are its dependencies and also what type of dependencies it depends on is it a http dependency is it a kafka dependency uh, you'd also be able to monitor the overall coverage of how things are improving in terms of your cdd adoption how many endpoints do you have in the central repo how many of them are being consumed both by the provider and the consumer and uh, what is the overall api coverage is it trending up or trending down so these insights can help you improve your cdd adoption in your organization 
And just to recap, we can support async API and there we can use JMS. If you have JMS, then you can mock that out. Uh, you can also use it for stubbing out databases, the JDBC stub. You can use it for stubbing out readers and many more such capabilities exist. So do check us out on specmatic.in. Thank you.